Thank you, Coach. We are in the Pacific Northwest as we get set for football at CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football. So are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. Now a play fake here on first down. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And it's a welcome back to health for last year's number one pick. This is Dalvin Cook. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The former Gamecock here, this is Mike Davis. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Anthony Barr in on the tackle. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Oh my goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> well, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Sebastian Janikowski to try the Seahawks field goal. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense, because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Minnesota Vikings there at 6-4-1. and one. And That Sunday night win last week over Green Bay, that was a big one for their playoff chances, no doubt. But as you pointed out to me before we came on air today, their December slate is rough. Yeah, they're not messing around, are they? This is the product of what happens when you win your division the year before. You end up playing a first-place schedule. So you play all the teams that won their division the year before, and this is some of the remnants of that, right? They're getting New England, all right? The pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play car, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. On now to kick it away is the punter, Matt Weil. Back deep, the dangerous Tyler Lockett. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. As Seattle takes a field again here, let's look at what they've done recently. Two straight wins. Now they're at six and five. And a lot of people were talking, hey, rebuilding year for the Seahawks. This doesn't look like a rebuilding year. No, it certainly does not. And think about what they have on their schedule now that they're on this little bit of a run because we talked about them in preseason. Had a little inkling, didn't we? That this could be the type of team that Pete Carroll would like to coach, and he certainly has it now. Down the stretch, four of the last five games at home, two games against San Francisco, one against Arizona, and they also get Minnesota and Kansas City at home in primetime games. And there's one thing we know. Russell Wilson is a primetime quarterback. Got to like Seattle's chances down the stretch. Yeah, you had their game last week that went over Carolina. You were glowing when talking about their quarterback, Russell Wilson. All they've talked about is getting back to running the football, and they've done that pretty darn well. But when it's all said and done, everything flows through number three. And he made the game-winning plays at Carolina, and I expect him to do the same as the season concludes. And the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Sherrill's to return it. A good return there. 17 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Minnesota Vikings offense coming back onto the field. And they got that win last week over Green Bay. 24-17 to improve to 6-4-1. and Yeah, and everyone's looking at their playoff chances and what their options are. And everyone, rightly so, is focused on their schedule. Because down the stretch, it won't be easy. Starting with at New England and then going to Seattle in a primetime game. So let's see how they handle that. But this comes back to one person. It comes back to Kirk Cousins. Their big free agent acquisition in the offseason. Can he be that piece that pushes them over the top as they expected? Will he play to that level down the stretch? He's playing pretty well right now, and Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen are giving him great targets on the perimeter. First down, here's the run with Cook. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, OK, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. Open here, Adam Thielen. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And defensively going with a dime set. Six DBs on third and four. 
From the gun, here's Cousins. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here's Matt Wilde now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 at the 20. To throw is Wilson. This complete to lock it. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They run it with Carson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. The reason that counter or misdirection plays work so well is that usually you've given them a reason to think that everything's going to the direction that starts initially. You've run that type of a play throughout the game. You've given them that look. And now you're going to counter things and bring it back the other way. Almost a tendency breaker at times. And a lot of it is making sure that you have an illusion, almost like a magician. Look over here, but the play is actually happening over there. And that's where running back's vision comes into play. See the hole in a place where people don't expect and get there with some speed. And that's exactly what he did on that play. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, Wilson, his throw incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and that takes us from second to third down. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. And he better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he's got Lockett. Give him 30 yards there. That's an excellent read right there. Soft cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. A first down carry for Davis. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. A gain of three, second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. Now Wilson on second down. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. The Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Wilson. From the gun, he'll throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. And Janikowski bangs it through, 
And that'll make it 6 0 here in the first. So two first quarter field goal attempts for him, and he's converted on both. I like the positive right there. Two for two, got the points on the board. The negative side is they didn't score touchdowns. And of course, going forward in this game, that's going to be the aim, and hopefully they'll be kicking extra points instead. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Second down, Cousins. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect, making the stop that time Bobby Wagner. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They've got it third and ten here to start things out. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, You've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Now it's Carson. 
And not much there as he gets it up to about the five yard line. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. Here's Wilson, and incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. They go play action here on first down. They'll find Thielen working the middle. And it's a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them. Big tackle, knock the ball free. Anything you can do to slow them down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted, out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from, right? On the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford, and boy, he's been good. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Come on, let's go. This is Carson, and he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Tackle made that time by Anthony Barr. Well, that rate picking up three yards of carry, you and I both know that doesn't cut it in this league in trying to get first downs, unless you're playing four down football. Then that's a whole different situation, but I don't think that's what they're trying to do here. Third and four, though, is still manageable. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Wilson. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. This one from 48 yards away. And Janikowski bangs it through, and that will make our score 9 to nothing. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high, as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. 
could you sense the relief, though, when oh, they yeah. only gave up the field goal <laughs> and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think Coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. To throw, Cousins. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. There's a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go play action. Cousins. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. With that incompletion, let's look forward to the rest of the NFL season. You know, a lot of people say the season doesn't really begin, get exciting till after Thanksgiving. Well, what under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations, because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Seahawks on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third down and 12. From the gun, Wilson. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's Carson, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Anthony Barr got a real education at UCLA in playing not just his normal position of stand-up outside linebacker, but on, down go. defensive end. So he had to incorporate a variety of moves, take on bigger people. So he learned great leverage while he was there. That really helps him when he's trying to stop people running the ball. Born in South Bend, Indiana. Thought about going back to go to Notre Dame, but you're right. Great career at UCLA, and now a great career in the NFL. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. 
It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And now Sebastian Janikowski on from long distance. He's hit from 61 and 63 in his career. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. On the return, here comes Amir Abdullah. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me one, see that we were having a tough patch. This two shall pass, this two shall pass. And if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On second down, Cook. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The hut, the hut, hut. On third down, Cousins. Open man is Thiel, and it's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A first down from Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. comes to Cook. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. How about that call, handed to the big guy in that situation? Normally you think of him as a real short yardage runner, but in this case, they trust him to get a few more yards than that. I remember an old New York Giants quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, telling me he loves offense coordinators who call the plays with a little bit of a bandy. On first down, Murray. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. This is caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Stephon Diggs, 33 yards. And the Vikings are able to make this a close game again. 
Dan Bailey now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And that will shave one more off this lead. Bailey now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And that'll be incomplete. With that incompletion, need to pass along the note about the Madden Classic, where you can watch some of the best Madden players battle it out for their share of 165 grand. It's live on Twitch. Charles starts 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, December 6th through the 8th. I know you'll be tuned in. Thank you for letting me know the time and the dates. I'm going to mark that down. I will be ready to go because they go at it now. I mean, those battles, those are pretty strong. And I love the imagination that you see in how they play because they don't think like conventional football. They know how to take advantage of any weaknesses of their opponent. And the best part, $165,000 on the line. You and I better hone up our games. Yeah, some people looking for some early holiday gifts there in the Madden Classic. The Seahawks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 10. Now they try the right side here. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A beautiful fake. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Cousins on first down. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And it's second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. On second down, Cousins again. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Cousins now to throw on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one.
Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll throw again, Cousins. The left side caught by Diggs. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. They give him a gain of 38. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping him on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. Cousins again. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Again, it's Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded, and you can hear them now. Third and goal. To the air again, it's Cousins. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. As his guys are in for six, and the Vikings are able to strike for six. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Bailey got the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. now to kick this one away. On the return, the All-Pro two years ago, Tyler Lockett. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. We have hit halftime, still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. We'll see how that recipe works. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Everyone's got four. Four down. Tight. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line.
They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On third down, Wilson. And it's hauled in by Nick Vanell. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On first and 10, it's Wilson. It's complete to Lockett. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. It's caught, lock it, and they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On second down, Wilson, and that is incomplete here. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Wilson now to throw on third down. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him up the middle. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what well, you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. They'll try to run with Carson. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. And a loss of three to bring up four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Ah. 
And Janikowski bangs it through. And with that, they move ahead by a point here in this third quarter. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. A good pickup of six there on first down. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The Vikings on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Matt Weil now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not Look easily done. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. They run again with Carson. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. Trying to find some space to operate, and now they'll have it, a gain of 12, a big first down to get away from the end zone. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a nice run to get this up over the 20-yard line. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. 
half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. On third down, that's Carson. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Now here's Michael Dixon. He's been terrific so far. Here's Sheryls. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out comes Minnesota. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They run it again with Cook. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game, but one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy right now to try to open things up in the run game. Now Cousins, throw left side on target to Thielen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Hey, we talked about Adam Thielen a little bit last year, didn't we? Possession receiver, makes some tough catches, gets it done, and he's a homeboy. <laughs> Grew up very close to the Twin Cities. And showing those possession receiver skills right there to pick up the first. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Bringing him to the ground defensively, Tedrick Thompson. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. Cousins now on second down. And that's going to be incomplete. The Vikings on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On first and ten, Cousins. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. They'll run with Cook, and they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the 
back into the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. Back now in Seattle, Washington. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. He'll get it up the middle. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded, and you can hear him now. Third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. K.J. Wright in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for a fourth-quarter lead. And Bailey able to knock it through. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. Oh, able to avoid him. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now Wilson on first down. He's got the tight end, Vanilla. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. On first down, Wilson. A dump off for Davis. And at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still, a lot of guys to account for. Now Wilson on second down, and Davis has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Good route. Good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route. Because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. Daniil Hunter in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Green 80. On second down, here's Wilson. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the pro bowler, Anthony Barr. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. 
short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Extra point try by Bailey. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded at the goal line. Gets past one man. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their 25 yard line. Back to the air, Wilson after the pick six. Underneath to Davis. And this one will go to the 28 yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be a second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. We got four. Nine, three, eight, eight. To throw is Wilson. To throw on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. Call it a gain of five. And that'll make it third and one. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Hey, right, move the team. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to sling this deep down. And this is caught inside the five. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 39 yards. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. Sebastian Janikowski on for the PAT. Surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this is up and good. And the lead is down to two. to kick is Janikowski. Here comes Sheryls. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. 
And now out comes Minnesota. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down. Cut strip. The ball's out. And the Seahawks have recovered. Well, that takeaway partner right there, that's a combination of coaching, execution, and absolute belief. Because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He hits Baldwin right side. First down, Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Now a handoff looking right. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Xavier Rhodes makes the tackle. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. And Janikowski bangs it through. And with that, they have taken the lead by a point here in the fourth. Well, it's hard to put your finger on whether this is something to celebrate or something maybe the offense is embarrassed by, but that's now six field goals he's made in this game alone. Yeah, he's bailed him out quite a bit so far, but it's very comforting to know that you have a kicker that's got your back. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address and those are so many drills focus on that all the time and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations doesn't always work out though now the first play of the drive there is incomplete and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. On second down, Cousins again. He'll find Thielen working the middle. 
And he's able to get up here to the 26. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On third down, Cousins over the middle here to Rudolph. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion at a first down. To throw it is Cousins. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Cousins on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime. And because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Back to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. He's going to let it fly. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. So another big shot dodged there defensively. Now they're just one more incompletion away from salting away this victory. And I know this feeling. They're almost giddy, but they have to stay focused and locked in. They can make one big mistake and throw it all away. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll look to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. 
And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here, and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. And how about this finish? Able to take a knee, run out the clock, and close this game out by one point. You talk about <laughs> how, many, how many coaches we talked to? They all said to say, all I want to do is win by yep. one point. That got tested in this one. Yep, and that cliche rings true. A single penny separates this one. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.